Namaste, Namaskaram, Vanakam, Namo Namaha, Jai Ganesh. Please visit our website at classicalyoga.org and thank you for your support. Today is another International Yoga Day, 2022. Therefore, happy International Hindu Yoga Day. Or is it? Procrastination, denial, capitulation, and universalism. The self-created problems of the Hindus. Though often highly intellectual, Einstein we are not. This great scientist was also a philosopher and a very practical man. There have to be reasons why there must be a continual effort to address distortions, misrepresentations, and outright theft of the Hindu yoga dharma. Simply look at today's yoga, and though factually all about the Hindu religion is anything but Hinduism, why is there this denial of the Hindu yoga dharma, Hinduism? Hindu dharma has produced brilliant minds with in-depth spiritual realizations. Hindus have created awesome, intricate principles and practices that constitute the ancient and contemporary Hindu religion, to say nothing of the Sanskrit language. Along with Tamil, Sanskrit, etc., is the language, the religious language of Hinduism. Can one be highly intellectual in one or more areas of life and yet still ignorant in many ways? Actually, one of the deadly social sins is knowledge about character development. Einstein said, quote, If you are clever, you can solve a problem. If you are wise, you can avoid the problem altogether. End quote. History has proved that Hindus have not been wise enough to avoid many problems. Paradoxically, intelligence can actually be an aid to ignorance when, through a lack of humility, this ignorance becomes denial and fosters procrastination and capitulation. For example, why are Ayurveda, chakras, kundalini, and mantra frequently viewed as New Age? Often Guru, Swami, Yogi, and Pandit are divorced from Hinduism. Why are Arya and Swastika seen as something evil? Why is the numeral zero recognized as an Arabic numeral? Hindus have also lost an original homeland, the valley of the Hindus. Hindus. How much are we willing to give up and even encourage? Why do concerned Hindus have to continually address misrepresentations and much ignorance about the Hindu yoga dharma? Why is yoga, properly called Hatha Yoga, an exercise for money? Authentic Hatha Yoga is a most esoteric and basically solitary Hindu practice. So, why is there Hot Yoga, Power Yoga, Goat Yoga, Beer Yoga, Nude Yoga, Yoga Booty Ballet, Ad Nausea? There are hundreds of yoga brands featuring mats, straps, tops, socks, underwear, and the ubiquitous yoga pants, to show off one's yoga booty, of course. There are lists of yoga stars and the wealthiest yogis. Claiming universalism fosters an attitude of anything goes. This posture has resulted in today's acronym Y-O-G-A, in other words, you only got absurdity. With all this superficial obsession, it should be no surprise that there have been scandals galore. These sexual and monetary scandals include the popular Indian teachers and many of their students. Please do your own homework on this matter as the list would go on and on. Listing all these distortions would fill a large volume. Are any Hindus feeling a bit of shame 
for what they have allowed to happen? There are innumerable personalized yoga sites putting one's name on yoga. Even Christians are not brash enough to put their names on Christian practices. Interestingly, most of the so-called yogis of today have simply left Christianity and other life commitments, keeping the same elitist mindset of entitlement, simply taking from others. Some have even remained Christians creating Christian yoga. Let's look at one of the popular yoga stars, Kino. She studied with Pratibhi Joyce. And when she asked him initially if she needed to become a Hindu, his response was, no, stay with your God. Ah, the capitulating Indian. So Kino praises God, Jesus, along with thinking she is a highly qualified Astanga yoga teacher. Remember, in true Astanga yoga, there's no mention of any specific asana. Please see our podcast on the eight broken limbs of yoga. Remember also that God is a Christian term. If we Hindus demand others respect our terms, then we should not be misusing the terms of other religion. See our podcasts, What is Your Concept of God? And also, Thoughtful Hindus are Atheists. When we speak of ignorance, we are not simply talking about a lack of knowledge, but the unhealthy dance, if you will, of ignorance. Unlike personal character flaws, ignorance can often affect whole groups by hypnotic repetition. Quote, everyone is doing it, end quote. Or, quote, it's not my problem, end quote. This chaltahe attitude must be replaced with kam chalu. I can do it. I can be part of the solution. Review our podcast on developing one's GPS acronym. In other words, finding one's inner guidance by being grateful, persistent, and willing to sacrifice. GPS. This inner compass of GPS is manifested by saying, Thank you. I can do this. Who can I help? It is a known, observable fact that ignorance gives birth to more ignorance. For example... One person buys expensive ripped jeans until it becomes a fashion trend. One person becomes a 200-hour certified yoga teacher, and soon everybody wants to be a yoga teacher. Everybody wants to own their own yoga studio. Everybody wants to offer teacher training. Ignorance especially infects the political realm, where one courts votes on agenda rather than on principles. Another deadly social sin, politics without principles. The politics of today's massive phony yoga movement is agenda-driven and not at all principled. Rather than respecting yoga's inseparable and sacred Hindu connection, the governing body of the elitist yoga alliance has taken over. The Yoga Alliance is consciously denying the commitment and lengthy study it takes before one teaches any aspect of the Hindu Yoga Dharma. And in a complete entitlement 180, authentic yogis and swamis, for example, are barred from teaching yoga in the public venues invaded by the Yoga Alliance. The reason for this discrimination? They are not certified, and of course, they would be teaching the Hindu religion if they're honest. Every Hindu knows the decades of study that are involved in any of the sacred Hindu arts, be it music, dance, sculpture, painting, and of course, the Dharma. Do not Hindus feel any emotion over the fact that in simply 200 hours one becomes a, quote, professional yoga teacher, end quote? Many Indians take great pride in their worldly education and materialism, And why not the same respect for the Hindu religious arts? The fault for all these distortions, past and present, lies with complacent 
and even capitulating Hindus. Uncle and Auntie Thomasos, if you get the drift. Popular Indian leaders who generally deny the word Hindu are selling yoga to the masses. Of course, many Hindus, or whatever term they choose to use, suffer from a blind universalism, often called a radical universalism. This denial of Hinduism and the misguided universalism has to be addressed. Let us look at the NAT principle, N-A-T, an acronym. One's religion is not the way, or fundamentalism, or the other extreme, no way, or always, but a way. Fundamentalism and universalism are actually two extremes that have much in common. The, quote, pure, unquote, fundamentalist views their religion as the only true one. On the other hand, the other extreme, the universalist is actually practicing something very specific and claims this to be universal. In other words, they are a fundamentalist, without disclosure, universalist. The latter gives rise to the quotes like, yoga's for everybody, and yoga fits into anyone's religion. The mature middle ground is that one's religion is a way, not the way, and not no way or always. The fundamentalist universalist attitude affects many Hindus, who often prefer the term Sanatan Dharma or perhaps Vedanta. Many of these Sanatanis are Vaishnavas, though they could be found in the other Sampradayas as well. As the Vaishnavas believe that Vishnu Krishna is God, from which all things come, including other religions. It comes as a shock to the FUs that Hinduism or Sanatan Dharma is not the oldest religion, lifestyle, or tradition. For those who choose to call Hinduism a lifestyle, is it the oldest lifestyle or tradition? This process of linking back religio and figuring out what holds dri, if you will, us and life together, is as old as humankind. When it comes to eternal, come on, who knows what is eternal? Old, of course, is not always better. But praising the antiquity of Hindu dharma and then letting it be so distorted is totally disingenuous and illogical. This universalism has actually created the modern spurious yoga movement. The cliché yoga is for everybody is no different from the fundamentalist statement Jesus is for everybody. Quote, if one doesn't stand for something, they will fall for anything, unquote. As Hindus, we need to remember the lesson from our primal deity, Ganapati, who stood up even in the face of Mahadeva Shiva. Standing up for principles, of course, means that sometimes we lose, and sometimes lose big. We are in this, Hindus, for the long haul, and to realize our inner character, Atma Dharshana Paramo Dharma. Standing up for principles is the only way that change truly happens. We can't wait for somebody else to take the initiative. And we have many Hindu warrior deities that should provide the stimulus to take action. For example, Skanda, Krishna, Hanuman, and Durgama. We are in a struggle for truth, justice, and peace. Remember, quote, peace is not merely the absence of conflict, but the presence of justice, end quote. We Hindus should never succumb to violence, but also never to capitulation and cowardice. Brave Hindus have stood up in the past, but this is now. Speak up, make your voice heard. Be active on social media and leave comments on YouTube. At Dharma Yoga Ashram, we often get the comment, no other Hindus complain, and some even come to our classes. 
Please do not use the poor excuse of following Ahimsa to justify not entering into a rigorous debate. You can spend years commenting on the plethora of YouTube videos totally misrepresenting what is actually Hindu yoga. Innumerable non-Hindus are claiming authority on all matters Hindu, of course, without ever mentioning the H-word or the R-word. However, they are spiritual. What is especially self-defeating is the number of Indians, Hindus, that are joining in the ignorance of the anti-Hindu yoga. Are many so desperate to fit in that they are willing to compromise their values? Or perhaps many Hindus are simply uninformed or suffering from a universalist delusion. Ignorance and denial is why people of all ages, in all ages, have been subject to cultic movements that often end up in total disaster. Simply look at the cultic movements that were stolen from Hinduism starting back in the 60s. See our podcast, The Con Art of Living. Almost every one of these cultic movements has ended up ruining the lives and finances of many people. But seemingly, how quickly we forget. Observe the current movement of the sad guru, pun intended, who has fooled the masses into believing that what he is teaching is not the Hindu religion, and that Hindu is not a religion, and that he has no beliefs. Now there's some beliefs for you. Again, ignorance often has little to do with one's IQ and is actually often very compatible with higher education. One may be so smart in one area and so oblivious in others, yet not willing to admit that one does not know. We can all work on developing our intellectual powers, but there are seemingly some genetic givens. However, ignorance is actually a choice. Albeit in its depths of blindness, choice does not seem to be part of the equation. For example, someone who is being cheated on kind of realizes it, but they just sweep this emotional dust under the carpet. In other words, denial and procrastination. Inevitably, there's a final showdown, and one may say, quote, how could I have been so stupid, unquote. All the facts of the Hindu, yoga, religious, spiritual, scientific lifestyle are easily available. See our podcast on the denial of the Hindu roots of yoga. And yet they are uncomfortable to many, so they are simply swept under the yoga mat. Inevitably, the spurious so-called yogi may wake up and or is confronted by a concerned Hindu, or even a Christian, for example, Remember, the Sanskrit Hindu word yoga, in Tamil yogam, means yuj atman brahman cha. In other words, to yoke to one's soul and soul source. The various real yogas, karma, bhakti, raja, jnana, hatha, mantra, japa, nada, natha, and kundalini, are the means by which Hindus achieve this Atma Darshana. And of all the Hindu yogas, Hatha was not supposed to be on display for quote-unquote obvious reasons. From the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, Hatha Vidya Bhavede Yavate Guya Niveda Tu Prakash Avaranam this knowledge, vidya, of hatha, is powerful, bhaveda, when kept secret, guhya, and loses power, niveda, when displayed, prakasha varanam. This admonition is also found in the other primary scriptures on hatha yoga, chakras, pranayama, etc., e.g., siva and giranda samhita, as well as the works of yogi garakana. However, today we have this so-called yoga divorced from the Hindu religion in public venues, schools, hospitals, etc. When one so quickly becomes a, quote, yoga teacher, unquote, 
Can this so-called yoga be anything but superficial? So why even offer it? Why don't school teachers, doctors, and staff who undergo intense and lengthy training question these, quote, certified yogis, unquote? Of course, in this yoga, there can be no mention of anything Hindu. Look at the recent case in Alabama, where they finally allowed yoga in the schools, but no mention of any Sanskrit, no mention of Hinduism, no mention of religion. Why not just slap the Hindus in the face? And Hindus are okay with this? What happens when one day, children who surf the internet ask their parents, perhaps a priest, rabbi, or imam, for example, why am I studying the Hindu religion? This web gets more duplicitous and complicated. As Yoga Swami, a mystic from Sri Lanka, said, quote, the blind and the blind in a blind dance shuffle. In other words, the teachers are blind, the students are blind, and the practice is blind. Einstein said, quote, Two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not sure about the universe, end quote. Yoga Swami also said, Due to a lack of tapas and sadhanas, there is so much untruth being delivered to a bewildered world. End quote. What do we do about this primal stupidity, this denial of the factual nature of yoga, the capitulation, this confused universalism and procrastination from which many Hindus suffer? Why do we have to continually repair the fences that we have broke and have allowed to be broken? Again, Einstein, quote, We need to conquer stupidity, his words, with a new way of seeing oneself, end quote. In addition, he said, quote, It's not that I am so smart. I just stay with the questions longer, end quote. From experience, Few Hindus are willing to take an honest look at our problems and dialogue. If we are ever to reclaim the sacred Hindu yoga dharma, it must be a we effort. Hindus need to enter into serious dialogue with each other and ask some very fundamental and serious questions. When many of us reflect on past injustices and distortions, witness the recent effort to clarify the meaning of swastika, we often end up saying, quote, how could we have been so stupid, end quote. This stupidity is not merely a lack of intellect, but the thick clouds of ignorance, which often breeds arrogance. Einstein said, quote, more dangerous than ignorance is arrogance, end quote. Arrogance tends to breed dominance and develops a hardened ego. We Hindus need to develop a sense of humility, born of wisdom and compassion. Without these qualities, we risk becoming arrogant and often humiliated. Look again to Mahaganapati's broken tusk of humility and keen awareness. Ganesha is synonymous with the earth. Among the several synonyms for Hinduism, the first written word is Ritvijam or victory to Mother Nature, Bhume Mata. We need to regain our respect for the earth and being grounded with a solid faith in the Dharma, in other words, Shraddha. As beautiful as the heart of Bhakti is, and the glowing head of the intellect, if our feet are on fire, we will get consumed. In other words, we ignore the fundamentals at our own pearl. And we can practice fundamentals without becoming a fundamentalist. We can love our sampradaya or sect without becoming sectarian. Go into nature. Study her well. See the sun rise and watch the ocean swell. Let her teach you the secrets that she holds. They're the same for today as in days of old. Einstein agreed. He said, quote, look deep into nature, then you will understand everything better, end quote. 
We need to find our divine inner child. Innocence at birth, innocence lost, Innocence regained is the mission at all costs. In other words, as a mature adult, find the divine child within. Einstein also said, quote, If you can't explain something to a six-year-old, you may not really understand it yourself, unquote. In addition, quote, The student is not a container you have to fill but a torch you have to light, end quote. Furthermore, he said, quote, we know light travels faster than sound. That is why some people appear bright until you hear them speak, end quote. No more double talk. As concerned Hindus, we need to step up to the plate and be proud to be Hindus, even if nobody else around you is doing it. Remember, Rosa Parks was one black woman who refused to sit at the back of the bus. Change only happens because one person is willing to stand up against injustice. As my Mataji said, nobody respects a coward. She also queried, why are so many Indians unfriendly and aloof? It is not a coincidence that many people so willingly take from the Hindu yoga dharma. Many of us cannot even agree on who we are. Remember, there are many synonyms. Ritta, dharma, Vedic, dharma, yoga, dharma, sanatan, dharma, Brahmanism, Hinduism, the Hindu religion. In speaking English, it is important at times to use the word religion. Religion is the designation in comparative studies, in official documents for nonprofit organizations, relevant in discrimination cases, and on hospital forms, for example. Hindu is actually a beautiful Sanskrit word. The letter H simply makes a different pronunciation of Hindu. Hindu means Chandra, Sarid. Bindu, Soma. Contemplate these words. Moon, river, Bindu, and the nectar of bliss. Are we not describing Shiva, Chandra? The Shakti Mata, Sarid, Surya Vishnu, the Bindi, and the Atmana, Ananda? Mystical Hindus see the outer reality the inner correlation, and the divine origin. Three things. We are Hindus. We do yoga, all of it, to reach our goal of Atma Darshana. Remember also that India, Indian, and Hindu can be different things, or the same, or different combinations. If non-Hindus wish to learn, let them. But, true to any religion, never make them teachers of any aspect of yoga before first becoming informed and committed Hindus. True to most religions, one also takes on a name indicative of that specific religion. From the Rig Veda, Dharhana Nama Yajniyam, meaning they took on sacred names. In the Vedas, there are no Judeo-Christian names. For those not willing to become qualified Hindu teachers, they must ethically and honestly stop this misuse of Hindu yoga. Others, however, may choose to be honest and simply teach stretch and relaxation classes. Hindus have many gifts to offer the world, but we need to be careful to whom we give these gifts. When an honest and ethical person receives a gift, they neither deny the giver nor take the gift and sell it. In other words, all of today's yoga is hot yoga, stolen. One of the greatest gifts to the world 
is the realization that we are all souls. That is why we say namaste, namaskaram, vanakam. Moreover, we have the Hindu yogas which help us realize this inner essence. We properly and more accurately call this soul the Atmana, not mind. We need to be careful with the monotheistic words spirit and soul. And though incorporeal, often connect to the mind and emotions. The Atmana is actually the provable experience of pure existence, Sat, pure energy, sound, light, Chid, and the heat, bliss, Ananda. This Satchit Ananda can be felt in the body, mind, and emotions, but also transcends them. At the core of the Atmana is Tat, or the absolute no thingness of which one cannot speak. Yatovacho nevartate aprapyas manasa saha. This Tat is likened to the black hole, that which is prior to creation within creation, and at dissolution. Hindus symbolize this tat by the Shiva Lingam and Kalima, for example. The understanding of the Atmana is not only the science of life, but also Einstein's most famous equation, E equals mc squared. So, be proud to be a Hindu. As one young Hindu said, Quote, I've got a dot on my head and it's really, really red. It's a bindu because I'm a Hindu and I'm proud to be a Hindu. What about you? I do yoga because it's Hindu. Karma bhakti, hatha is to, rajagyana. It's all yoga. It's all Hindu. It's not boga, meaning bogas, end quote. Stand up for the dharma. Jai Ganesha. Namaste.